Hello everyone, today we're going to cover a couple of the commands that I occasionally see in tweets on Twitter uh, that are sort of useful in Rails, but really just don't warrant an entire video on their own. First one we're going to cover is a alternative to the migrate and setup commands. It's not really an alternative, but here's the basic idea. If you drop your database and you're using Postgres and then you run a Rails DB colon migrate command, you'll throw an error. Now we can run a Rails DB colon setup command. And what this will do is it will do our migration, it will create the database, and then it'll do the database seed for us. If we then want to once again run a migration after this is seeded, we can then run a Rails DB colon migrate. But let's say, for example, uh, for some unknown reason, you always want to run the same command. Maybe you're doing some weird external management of a Rails app, and running DB migrate or DB setup is way too confusing because you don't know how conditionals work, but you're still in a position to make those decisions. In that case, you can use the db colon uh, prepare command. Prepare is going to run migrate if you already have a database. If you don't have a database, it's going to run rails db colon setup. Setup is going to create your database, migrate it, and then seed it. Migrate is, of course, just going to add in your new migration. So prepare is going to do one or the other, depending on if your database exists already or not. Not really that useful, but it's a command. Thought I'd cover it. Next one's a little bit more useful. This is going to be a task that you can run if you need to reseed your database. So we all know the db seed command. We just saw it run where it creates a whole bunch of stuff. So here it creates comments and posts, and then it seeds the data with some Ahoy event so that we have analytics track. That's Sounds very complicated, but it's just a bunch of numbers get put into the database, doesn't matter. Now the seed command is great, but if I want to reset this, I have to run like a, a db colon reset command, for example. That's kind of a pain. I don't want to have to drop the database every time. So what we can do instead is we can run a rails db colon seed colon replant. And what this is going to do is it's going to truncate the database, which means it's going to get rid of all of the non-essential data, and then it's just going to run your seed command. So it's not going going to get rid of the Rails specific stuff uh, that Rails needs. It's also not going to recreate your database or reset your database. Or I guess it's going to reset your database, but it's going to just get rid of your data. It's not going to have to migrate again. So there's a couple steps it runs through here. Um, it loads the config, checks if you're in a protected environment. So you might be in production where you don't want to be able to just drop your database. Uh, it then does the truncate, it then does the seed, and then it will, uh, I guess I can try this real quick. If we do a Rails G migration, temp migration, if we run this migration real quick to just generate an empty one, and then we run the Rails DB seed replant, it should throw an error saying, hey, you have to run a migrate before you get here. And of course, to fix this, we can just run a Rails DB colon prepare command to prepare the database. So there you go. There's our migration run without having to reseed everything. Now we could, of course, run our Rails DB seed replant if we wanted to, to just quickly reseed it. So those are two useful commands. Now let's say you're new on the job. Someone finally managed to hire a junior developer in Ruby on Rails somehow. Don't know how you did it, but congratulations. And you have no idea how an application works. Now this one's pretty simple. Uh, ignore the error window right here. This is just a blog application that has a whole bunch of spaghetti code in it with a whole bunch of different files and folders. So we have like stuff for drag and drop, devise, we have comments, we have a checkout thing that's probably poorly implemented, and a whole bunch of controllers. So maybe you just want to take a look at some of the information around this application. Place you might start, you might say, all right, let's see what the middleware looks like. So if we run Rails middleware, this should spit out some information. Just by running Rails middleware, if we scan through this real quick, we can ignore a lot of the action dispatch stuff. But we can get down here and we can see, okay, it's using web console. It kind of checks out. We saw a web console. Uh, we also have the better errors also checks out. We saw better errors. Um, and you know, we got like warden and we also have bullet. That's good. It means that they're at least doing some basic optimization. Uh, and then we have our routes, I guess. So there's really not a lot here, but if you're in a bigger application, you might see some more useful information. Similarly, if you don't value your sanity, you can run Rails initializers to see a whole bunch of stuff that runs as an initializer. Now this one's a lot more involved. We have chart kick for our charts. We have Ahoy for our analytics, pay for our payment processing, Wicked for, I guess, PDFs, but I don't think we used Wicked. Um, we have the notice gem, we have device, stimulus. And again, this is just a good way to like look through your application as well. It doesn't have to be like your first day on the job as a junior developer, but this is really interesting to see. 
And of course you can always like run these commands and then do like a G rep for pay. Oops, a G rep for pay. And all you're really doing here is you're just searching through your uh, initializers to see if something's being used. So maybe we wanna see if we're using devise, if we run the initializers and devise has some initializers. It's not a guarantee you'll find some information, but it can be useful. All right, so that's taking care of your initializers and your middleware. What else can we do? Well, if we wanna see some basic information on a Rails application, maybe analyze its health, it's always helpful to take a look at the stats of the Rails application. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are used to this. Basically, what this is gonna do, it's gonna show you how many lines of code, classes, methods, etc., are inside of a uh, Rails app. So here we can see that in our controllers, we have 725 lines, 418 lines of code, 21 classes, 64 methods. You get the idea. So we get the totals down here. We can see for helpers, jobs, and models. Uh, some of the stuff really doesn't matter. Like your JavaScript is always gonna be probably overutilized. Um, your controller tests are probably always gonna be underutilized. And yeah, so that's just some basic information on your Rails app. Sort of gives you an overview of the health. It's not something I would put a bunch of weight into, much to the chagrin of most management. But uh, just to take a look at a new Rails app and see that this has 1,700 lines of code and we're only testing 300, that probably means there's some problems in the test coverage. Okay, so that takes care of stats. What else can we do? Well, there's this weird command that is sometimes helpful. It is the Rails runner command. And if we run this real quick, you'll see that the Rails runner basically takes in some Ruby code or a file name. So let's take a look at the Ruby code. Basically what this will do is it'll start your app and then it'll run some code. Pretty simple. Let's try to run the uh, hello world equivalent of this. So let's run a Rails runner. And then inside of this, we're just gonna puts and then hello world. If we run this, it'll take a second because it has to initialize the Rails environment. And then you can see, hey, we have hello world here. Now, how do we prove this is actually running through Rails? Well, we can do some really weird stuff in here uh, that we could also just do in the Rails console, but who knows, maybe you need this for some reason. Why don't we take this and let's put out something a bit more useful. So let's add in a template and let's just say, I don't know, let's grab the user.first.email. So we want to grab the first user's email. So let's run this and see who the first user in our application is. Of course, it's me, I'm doxing myself. That's pretty neat. Uh, maybe we also just need some basic information out of the Rails app, but we don't want to have to open up a Rails console. So we can just do a, uh, let's say post.count to get how many posts there are. We know there's going to be 10 because we seeded the application. Of course, with the Rails runner command, you also have the option to run this in a specific environment if you need to. So maybe you wanna check how your production or your test environments are. Another one that I get asked about a lot is time zones and you bet it, there's time zone command too for some reason. So you can run Rails time colon zones and you can see all the different places and the time zone that they are in according to UTC time. Again, why you would need this, I do not know. It's a nice to have, but it's one of those things where I just really don't know why this needs to be a core command. Um, but okay, you can get the UTC time for various countries across the world. That's interesting. Now, how did we get all of these commands? Am I some kind of wizard, some kind of genius savant that knows what they're doing? Absolutely not. I have no idea what I'm doing. If you run the Rails command and you actually read the output, you'll see that it just has all those commands listed there. So I know I'm like destroying the secret here at the end, but this is a good place to just take a look, take a minute to, to absorb what this is offering you because some of these are really good, like the DB system change command, which lets you change the Postgres off of SQLite if you accidentally set it up wrong every single time you make a Rails app. Uh, there's also other commands that you can just look through and sort of get an idea for what they do. Um, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful. <laughs> I know it's a bit of a strange video, but I've seen so many of these where it's just like DB colon setup and then it's just a crash course tweet and it's like, yeah, you're just, you're just going down the list. The last 12 tweets were seed replant up through like DB migrate redo. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Um, <laughs> hopefully I'll see you in the next video. I haven't just completely lost my audience after this. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.